Hi everybody. I hope you must be enjoying our series of flash test. Here I am to discuss the solutions of flash test 2 of quantitative section. Before heading to the questions, I would like you to introduce the quantitative section of GMAT. The quantitative section of GMAT consists of two parts. One is problem solving and the another is data sufficiency. The first problem solving questions. This is the same five answer multiple choice format you have seen on any standardized test. You are given with a question statement and five option choices out of which only one is correct. The second part is data sufficiency. This question type is unique to the GMAT. The prompt asks a question without giving enough information to answer. The prompt is followed by two statements, statement 1 and statement 2. And we have to determine for each statement, does the statement allow us to answer the question? The five option choices are Choice A. Statement 1 alone is sufficient, but statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Option choice B says, statement 2 alone is sufficient, but statement 1 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Option choice C says, both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient to answer the question. Option choice D says, each statement alone is sufficient to answer the question. Option choice E says, statements 1 and 2 together are not sufficient to answer the question. So if by statement 1, I am able to solve the question. So only option choice A and D can be the answer. Look, A says statement 1 alone is sufficient, but statement 2 alone is not sufficient. This can be the answer when you have solved the question by statement 1. And D, each statement alone is sufficient, can also be the answer if statement 2 alone is able to solve the answer. Right? So we call it AD and BCE approach. If by statement 1, you are able to answer the question, then you are left with only two answer choices A and D. And if by statement 1, you are not able to answer the question, then you are left with three answer choices that is B, C and E. Now let us move to our first question of flash test 2. The question says, is XZ greater than 3? Then we have two statements, X by 4 is equal to 3 by Z. And the second statement is x square yz is equal to 3xy. This is a data sufficiency question. These are the option choices as discussed above. They are always kept in the same order. Now let us move to the solution. Look at the first statement. x by 4 is equal to 3 by z. Clearly, by cross multiplication, we get xz is equal to 12 which is clearly greater than 3. Therefore, statement 1 is sufficient to answer the question. So, by AD and BCE approach, BCE cannot be the answer to the above question. So, we are left with A and D. Now, look at the second statement. x square yz is equal to 3xy. Take 3xy to left hand side, then take xy common, and then you are left with xy multiplied by xz minus 3 is equal to 0. This states that either xy is equal to 0 or xz is equal to 3. Be careful, we cannot cancel out xy on both the sides until we are given that x and y both are not equal to 0. So you cannot cancel xy with xy here, right? So xy can be equal to 0 or xz can be equal to 3. Therefore, statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Therefore, D can also be cancelled out and we are left with only one answer choice that is answer choice A. So answer to the question is statement 1 alone is sufficient but statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. So guys now let us move to the second question. It is again a data sufficiency question. We are given with a question statement and two option statements right. So question says is B greater than A. The first statement is A to the power 4 plus B to the power 4 plus c to the power 4 is equal to 0. Second statement is a to the power 3 plus b to the power 3 plus c to the power 3 is equal to 0. 
these are the option choices which again I have discussed above and they remain in same order. Now have a look at the first statement. It says a to the power 4 plus b to the power 4 plus c to the power 4 is equal to 0. Now we know that a number raised to even power is always greater than or equal to 0. Therefore a to the power 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Similarly b to the power 4 and c to the power 4 is also greater than or equal to 0. Since 1 says that a to the power 4 plus b to the power 4 plus c to the power 4 is equal to 0, therefore a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to 0. Therefore, we can tell whether b is greater than a or not. In our case, b is equal to 0 and a is equal to 0, right? So again, by statement 1, it's sufficient to answer the question. So again, b, c, e can be cancelled out and we are left with a and d. Now, look at the statement 2. a to the power 3 plus b to the power 3 plus c to the power 3 is equal to 0. Now, we know that a negative number raised to odd power is always negative and a positive number raised to odd power is always positive. So, statement 2 doesn't help us to know the values or the signs of a and b. So, we cannot compare b and a, right? For example, let us take c is equal to 0. a can be 4 and b can be minus 4. This satisfies our second statement a cube plus b cube plus c cube is equal to 0 and here a is greater than b. Similarly, when c is equal to 0, a is equal to minus 4, b is equal to 4 again satisfy this statement a to the power 3 plus b to the power 3 plus c to the power 3 is equal to 0 and here a is not greater than b. So you cannot tell whether b is greater than a or a is greater than b by second statement. Therefore, statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Therefore, d can be cancelled out and we are left with option choice a. That is, statement 1 alone is sufficient but statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Let us move to the third question. Is mod x minus 1 less than 1? Again, a data sufficiency question. Statement 1, x minus 1 to the power 2 is less than or equal to 1. Statement 2, x square minus 1 greater than 0. Same option choices, remain same, always in the same order. Is mod x minus 1 less than 1? Let us look to the first statement. Or before heading, let us make the question simpler. Mod x minus 1 is less than 1. C. I remove the mod and write two inequalities x minus 1 is less than 1 and greater than minus 1. Solving two inequalities first gives me x is greater than 0 and second says x is less than 2. So we need to check whether x lies between 0 and 2. Be careful x cannot be equal to 0 and cannot be equal to 2. Look at statement 1 x minus 1 to the power 2 is less than or equal to 1. Taking square root on both the sides, we get mod of x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1. Again, make it look simpler. x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 or greater than or equal to minus 1. Solving two inequalities, I get x is greater than or equal to 0 or x is less than or equal to 2. See, now x can lie between 0 and 2 and take the value 0 and 2 as well. So I cannot to tell whether x is lying between 0 and 2 or equal to 0 or 2. So statement 1 alone is clearly not sufficient to answer the question. Now let us move to the second statement. x square minus 1 is greater than 0. Right? Factorizing I get x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 is greater than 0. Solving I get x belongs to minus infinity to 1 union 1 to infinity. So again, x can lie between 0 and 2 and may not lie between 0 and 2. For example, x can take value 3 by 2, which lies between 0 and 2. x can take value 4, which is not between 0 and 2. So we cannot be sure that x lies between 0 and 2. So statement 2 alone is also not sufficient to answer the question. Let us combine the statement now. x belongs to minus infinity to 1 union 0 to infinity. Therefore, x can lie between 0 and 2 and may not lie between 0 and 2. Again, 
if x is equal to 3 by 2, it lies between 0 and 2 and satisfy both the statements, right? And x can be equal to 4, again satisfy both the statements and not lie between 0 and 2. So we cannot be sure that x lies between 0 and 2 even while combining the statements. Hence, both statements together are not sufficient to answer the question. So right answer to this question is option choice E. Let us move to the second last question. The numbers A, B and C are all positive. If B square minus C square is equal to 17, then what is the value of A square minus C square? Statement 1 says A minus B is equal to 3. Statement 2 says A plus B upon A minus B is equal to 7. Now, since the two statements give me the equations involving A and B, so let us convert the question into the form of A and B. For that, let us assume A square minus C square is equal to X and we are given B square minus C square is equal to 17. Subtracting 1 from 2, I get A square minus B square is equal to X minus 17. See, I need to find X, that is A square minus C square. So I need to check whether I can find x or not by the statements. First statement, a minus b is equal to 3. Put the value of a minus b is equal to 3 in a square minus b square. I get 3 multiplied by a plus b is equal to x minus 17. Now can I find x? The answer is no because I don't have the values of a and b. Therefore, statement 1 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Take option choice 2 now. We have a plus b upon a minus b is equal to 7 or a plus b is equal to 7 multiplied by a minus b. Again, I get 7 multiplied by a minus b ka whole square is equal to x minus 17 when I place a plus b is equal to 7 into a minus b. Now, again, I cannot calculate x since I don't have the values of a and b. Therefore, statement 2 alone is also not sufficient to answer the question. Now, let us combine the statements. Now, I know a plus b upon a minus b is equal to 7 and a minus b is equal to 3. Therefore, a plus b is equal to 7 multiplied by a minus b that is 7 multiplied by 3 is equal to 10, 21. Sorry, I get 7 multiplied by 3 is equal to 21. Therefore, a minus b multiplied by a plus b is equal to x minus 17. 3 multiplied by 21 is equal to x minus 17 or x is equal to 80. Therefore, statement 1 and 2 together are sufficient to answer the question but neither alone is sufficient to answer the question. So right answer is option choice C. Let us move to the final question. If a is equal to 2b is a to the power 4 greater than b to the power 4. Statement 1 says a square is equal to 4b square. Statement 2 says 2a plus b is less than a by 2 plus b. Again, the same option choices of data sufficiency question in the same order always. Now, first resolve the question into simpler form. Take b to the power 4 on the left hand side. a to the power 4 minus b to the power 4 is greater than 0. I need to check this. Now a is equal to 2b given in the question. So a to the power 4 is equal to 16b to the power 4. Write 16b to the power 4 in place of a to the power 4. I get 16b to the power 4 minus b to the power 4 is greater than 0 or 15b to the power 4 greater than 0. Now I know even power raised to any real number whether it is positive or negative is greater than 0. But I just need to check is b equal to 0 because if b becomes 0, 15b to the power 4 will be equal to 0 and not greater than 0. So I just need to check whether b is a non-zero quantity or a zero quantity. Right? b is equal to 0 or not. So let us move to the first option statement. It says a square is equal to 4b square. It doesn't help me at all to know whether A is equal to 0 or B is equal to 0 or A and B both are not equal to 0. So clearly statement 1 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Let us move to the second option statement. 
it says 2a plus b is less than a by 2 plus b. Now cancel out this b. 2a minus a by 2 is equal to 3a by 2. So 3a by 2 is less than 0. Therefore a is less than 0. Now a is equal to 2b and a is a negative quantity. Therefore b which is equal to a by 2 is also a negative quantity. Now I know b is a non-zero quantity. So 15b square is obviously greater than 0. Therefore, statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. So the right answer to this question is statement 2 alone is sufficient, but statement 1 alone is not sufficient. So that was all for the flash test 2. Hope you are enjoying this.